Доброго... Нормально. Доброго дня. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. Uh, uh, welcome to all the uh, uh, spectaculars, to the audience who are watching, who are listening. Today we have an important day. I would like to disclose one small secret. Uh, this event had been planned long, long, long ago. Um, because we believe that the Minsk agreements is the topic which uh, had been uh, have been interesting and uh, raises a lot of concerns uh, uh, around the entire world. Uh, uh, it has been lasting for seven years today. But we do not observe any radical um, movements, uh, any radical um, change in the situations. And nevertheless, uh, the Russian narratives uh, are persist in the international uh, informational space, including the United Nations platform. And Russia keeps insisting that Ukraine has to do this, has to do that, and implement the Minsk agreements. Before, I will give the floor to those people who took high positions uh, in the civil service, in the uh, governmental agencies, and who are the top-level experts in those issues. Uh, before giving the floor to all those people, I would like to add a couple of words as uh, uh, direct participant of those negotiations in Minsk. Um, there are two aspects which I would like to emphasize. Uh, the Minsk uh, uh, events and negotiations. Um, this is purely political uh, process, and all the agreements are of political nature. These are not treaties of international uh, legal nature. These are just political agreements. Nevertheless, the Russian Federation keeps uh, uh, insisting that and keep saying and spreading this narrative that these are uh, international uh, treaties. Uh, and uh, 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 moreover, uh, as to the Minsk agreements, Ukrainian representatives uh, uh, wanted to defend Ukrainian international interests. We have to clearly understand that Minsk agreements were signed under huge uh, pressure and threat on behalf of Russian Federation, Russian tanks, Russian military equipment, and Russian uh, military forces uh, were um, very uh, closely involved in that. And uh, besides that pressure, which was ma made at the moment of signing uh, with the great intention to uh, implement, to reach a ceasefire and to start the exchange of hostages and prisoners of war, actually. Um, these were the main points, and these were the uh, primary points of the Minsk agreements. And uh, despite all what is said by Russian Federation about Ukrainians' non-compliance with Minsk agreements, uh, that two points were the uh, primary items. And uh, uh, Ukraine's position uh, in the uh, agreement's implementation is adequate. Uh, 
but as a diplomat, um, I should say that uh, bad peace is better than a good war. And uh, uh, now I am uh, happy to start presentation of my today's uh, interlocutors. I believe that, you know, all these people, and uh, including Mr. Marchuk, who will be connected via um, uh, uh, online connection. Uh, so today we will discuss situation uh, with the Minsk agreements as of now. And uh, we will discuss uh, uh, the possibilities to defend national interests of Ukraine. I'm happy that Mr. Reznikov joined us today because uh, Mr. Reznikov is uh, Vice Prime Minister on the integration of occupied territories and uh, uh, I am very much interested to hear from Mr. Reznikov uh, um, especially um, about the legal aspects of the agreements, because I know that you are a lawyer yourself, and uh, um, currently you are very closely, very deeply involved in the negotiations process. Thank you, Valeri. You uh, pointed out to the main issues of and to the main problem issues of the Minsk agreements, and uh, actually this uh, reflects uh, my perception of the documents uh, that we are discussing today. Uh, so the main reason of the Minsk agreements was to save lives of Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian servicemen. Uh, of course, I do not like the text as much as you do not like it, and uh, there was an attempt of excessive titalization, ex excessive details in each uh, uh, item, in each provision of those agreements, uh, the provision about regaining of the control over borders requires reformulation, and uh, uh, Russia keeps in insisting that it should be closely implemented while all our partners, France and Germany, they uh, uh, provide support to us in our um, interpretation of this uh, uh, provision. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we all understand that e this provision could not be implemented in the uh, language uh, in which it is written. Um, and uh, uh, although Minsk agreements are neither a treaty nor a law, uh, 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 nor official uh, um, uh, um, uh, treaties. Um, uh, th this is just uh, political agreement, uh, despite all the attempts of Russians to present it like the act of international law. And uh, uh, when we look at the UN resolutions, we clearly see that they never mention the Minsk agreements as international instrument or international treaty, uh, which is compulsory for implementation. But this does not mean that Ukraine has to withdraw from implementation of this agreement. Uh, we believe that 
uh, they said the only agreement uh, uh, called uh, to regulate the military conflict uh, um, between Russia and Ukraine in the east of Ukraine. And uh, uh, there are uh, also several protocols to these agreements. Uh, uh, protocol number one, protocol number two, etc. Uh, the Russia, uh, the, the Russian Federation also tries to pretend that they are just uh, um, uh, intermediaries uh, between Kyiv and uh, its uh, um, uh, interlocutors in Donbass. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, this uh, uh, ruins the the logic of the uh, document. If uh, uh, quite quite often Russians keep saying that, but uh, um, uh, actually it is uh, uh, signed by Ukrainian and Russian representatives, but it is not ratified by Russian Duma. So it is not a treaty in full sense. Uh, 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 then if uh, uh, Mm, they keep insisting that this is just a treaty, then um, it has uh, no the features of the treaty. And unfortunately, these narratives are used by the Russian Federation to uh, g actually block, to create obstacles to any moves uh, forward uh, as to the implementation of uh, uh, the agreements. When in October 2015, uh, uh, the elections in Ukraine did not include Donbass and uh, mm, uh, it was not surprisingly for the Russian Federation while uh, now uh, they want to have elections and uh, try to convince that political steps should be first uh, without security, while we keep saying that security aspects should be first and then the um, uh, political aspects of uh, Minsk agreements should be implemented. Mm. Thank you, uh, Mr. Reznikov. Uh, I would like to make a review of uh, the of the events that. Uh, um, happened in course of the negotiations process and uh, uh, specifically in the trilateral, uh, trilateral uh, group. Uh, Irina uh, was a member of this group for a long period of time. Mm, uh, could you uh, describe your uh, practice uh, of participation in that uh, agreements and uh, uh, specifically um, what was a change in attitude uh, from those who are part of the process, but are not the party of the agreements. I mean the uh, militants uh, in Donbass. Mm. No sound? Uh -huh. uh, thank you, dear colleagues. First of all, I'm very happy to uh, see here our uh, the then um, means group I can see here Mr. Besmertny, uh, uh, Mr. Chernish, uh, 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 Mr. Um, 
uh, and we are happy to welcome uh, his uh, uh, his excellency ambassador of uh, france uh, at this event because uh, worry, without this close support from our partners like france and germany it would be very difficult for us to um uh, uh, to continue this process. Quite recently, President Zelensky with the representatives of the EU uh, visited the contact line. Although we are in opposition to President Zelensky's political party, nevertheless, we are not in opposition position to the country and uh, to the situation in this country and uh, oh, we are very keen to uh, counteract this aggression we clearly understand that aggression against Crimea against Donbass uh, was in intentional action by Mr. Putin. Uh, he wanted uh, to uh, attack our southern and east territories to diminish uh, our uh, energy in uh, moving to the West, so to say, to our strive to Euro-Atlantic integration. And uh, we clearly understand that the militants are uh, collaborators of the Russian Federation and their uh, moves in Minsk uh, um, has only one objective to uh, promote the uh, Mm, uh, the intentions of Russian Federation. Unfortunately, the attitude of Ukrainian party and its position had slightly changed quite recently these days, uh, actually two, three days ago, I came back from the contact line. Uh, uh, um, uh, my vision of the Minsk agreements is that it is a, a extremely tough document for the country, uh, uh, which was signed at the moment when there was very aggressive uh, offensive of the Russian Federation, which we had to stop. Uh, uh, we uh, not only initiated that ceasefire, but we also stuck with the conditions of the ceasefire. Uh, then in uh, 2015, Ukrainian parliament had passed two very painful bills about uh, the uh, 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 self-governance in the occupied territories and about the um, a special regime for them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Russian Federation uh, has not changed its approach. When uh, uh, Your Excellency and the President uh, uh, visited the contact line Two Ukrainian military uh, servants were killed, and unfortunately, the president uh, uh, did not mention the Russian Federation when he uh, mentioned this grave news uh, uh, publicly. And uh, I have to say that my recent visit to the contact line proved that all the the uh, uh, military officers, uh, soldiers, uh, servants, uh, uh, they uh, uh, know quite well that new team, new uh, 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 contingent of the um, snipers which recently was brought to the contact line by uh, 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 the militants, they are actually organizing safari on Ukrainian servicemen and killing them. Uh, uh, 
we uh, uh, during our term we believe that the norman deformant was the main platform for discussions about implementation of minsk agreements and unfortunately the new presidential team had raised the level of the minsk platform and uh, uh, gave an opportunity to the Russians to uh, discredit this uh, um, uh, platform um, uh, as often as they want. When uh, we recollect the appointment of Mr. Fokin, whose position, pro-Russian position, was uh, quite well known before his appointment, and we um, uh, disclosed that quite in, uh, quite loudly before his appointment, but nevertheless um, he, he he was appointed later. Uh, and uh, what uh, uh, another mistake was the exchange with hostages when Ukraine uh, transferred. Uh, the uh, hostages or prisoners which were requested by Moscow. And another grave fact, uh, 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 you, uh, Ukrainian, uh, uh, we heard quite often about 200 days of uh, ceasefire without violations. Uh, Unfortunately, Ukrainian servicemen are prevented from responding to shellings. The second withdrawal of heavy equipment. Um, uh, the aim was uh, to prevent shellings of uh, settlements and villages, uh, despite of the security uh, increase. This resulted in the uh, de uh, decreasing of security. This had ter uh, been turned into gray area where the snipers and uh, um, uh, miners work and uh, uh, where mines are installed and uh, um, now this is this had become even more dangerous so we request to uh, to insist on withdrawal to raise salaries of ukrainian servicemen and uh, uh, the third, uh, Mr. Reznikov, Mr. Yermak kept saying that uh, Minsk agreements require uh, modernization. Um, uh, 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 just after elections, President Zelensky uh, had a window of opportunity to uh, raise that issue, but uh, he uh, missed that chance. Uh, but uh, I think that even now it's not too late to raise the issue about peacekeeping forces. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Merkel uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, her colleagues work with the agreement where the peacekeeping forces are mentioned. And uh, I think that we should raise this issue once again. Um, the next, uh, uh, the roadmap, which was mentioned uh, by uh, Mr. Reznikov and his team. And the third, uh, uh, we suggest to address to the United States and uh, encourage this new administration to uh, bring back the position of special envoy uh, on Donbass. Uh, 
and uh, the last but not least uh, we uh, uh, suggest to uh, organize a special or resume the work of a special working group in the parliament which will uh, be responsible for the scrutiny of Minsk process and thus will be able to supervise it. Thank you, Reina. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, thank you for your broad presentation, although I would uh, prefer to focus more on the aspects which unite us today. Uh, 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 unfortunately, we cannot discuss neither military nor strategic aspects of the uh, situation along the contact line today. To do this, we had uh, to invite the general staff members and uh, the um, uh, military uh, commanders, uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, uh, as Irina mentioned, our uh, friends and partners uh, from France, from Germany, actually the coalition of support is much broader. It includes the USA, Australia, all those countries who supported us in 2014 in the United Nations when we uh, suggested to vote for the revolution for the resolution, uh, but uh, much contribution uh, and the biggest contribution was brought by uh, France and Germany. I personally know how much was done actually with the help of those two countries the full scale war in the east of ukraine was stopped thank your position and once again thank you france and germany so much for your support and uh, your significant role i mean your country in uh, maintaining peace in central of europe it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's only war that exists now in Europe, and that's a real problem. It's not a problem. We uh, pay a huge price. Our guys just been killed, and it's unfortunately continuous. But the truth also, uh, another truth that we also should be taken into consideration, because France and Germany have many other uh, interests in foreign policy, many other things to do. And despite of that, they pay great attention of uh, support of Ukraine in this uh, continuous conflict with Russia. So thank you so much once again, and Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for it working, yeah, for in, in inviting me. And I, I will start with your, with your first point, uh, the fact that um, the situation is, is still uh, very bad on the ground, that it's probably the only existing war at the moment on the continent. I have been, as it has been said, with, with President Zelensky uh, last uh, Friday uh, to the front, to the contact line, and it's something very moving to, to, to see uh, your young uh, soldiers uh, um, being um, <coughs> posted so far from, from the contact line and being in, in real danger. Uh, I want also to, to pay tribute to, to the three uh, soldiers who, who passed away due, during uh, the, the weekend. And it's clear that it's a, a tragic, uh, tragic situation in this part of Europe. And on this, I want also to underline that my authorities are, are devoting a lot of time, a lot of political clout to try to, to, to find a, a, a solution. Uh, as you know, France, together with Germany, we are involved in Normandy, and uh, I want just to to underline how, including my president, President Macron, is, is committed to, to peace and committed to, to, to try to, to find out um, a, a solution. He's spending a lot of time uh, on these matters, exchanging with <coughs> President Zelensky, with uh, President Putin, with Chancellor Merkel. There are so many meetings, so many discussions. And why there are so many? Because it's important. It's important mm -hmm. for Europe and it's important for, for Ukraine. And, on th and this is the fact that my predecessor, Isabelle Dumont, has joined now the, the diplomatic cell 
at, at the Elysee, it, it, it another uh, strong signal of how my country is involved and is committed to to try to um, to, to to get out from from this terrible uh, situation. We are diplomats. I am diplomat. So in diplomat, we, we are used, I would say, to assess situation. And when it comes to the anniversary of Minsk, uh, the best uh, image that I would like to, to follow is, is the one, the traditional one of the glass half uh, full or half empty. empty. Uh, we are diplomat and diplomat also we are uh, optimistic by, by nature. So I would prefer to see the glass half uh, uh, full. Uh, and not uh, half uh, empty. And if we look back, it's true that we can be proud uh, all together of some progress made during, uh, I would say, during uh, the last, uh, my, my tenure. I joined in, in September 2019, so since President Zelensky, I, I, don't, I don't want to go um, uh, far than, than this, but since September or since uh, President Zelensky, we, we have seen some, some, some good progress and we, 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 are, we are satisfied. Of course, they are not enough, but anyway, we, we must take stock of, of, those, of those elements. I want to mention the construction of the Stanislav Luhansk Bridge, new release of prisoners, uh, and of course, the main um, um, flagship element was the summit Paris summit in, in December uh, last year, and the agreement on, on joint conclusion. It was the first time for three years that it was possible to reach an agreement of all the parties, all the four parties, uh, on joint conclusion. Um, this has been implemented, uh, more or less, but uh, we must, must also um, take um, into consideration the ceasefire. It is not a perfect ceasefire, that's true, and uh, we, uh, your country suffers, continue to suffer casualties, which, which is uh, unacceptable. But anyway, there is a ceasefire now for three months, more than three months, and this is really a, a great uh, achievement because it saved life, and this is the most important life of young um, um, Ukrainian soldiers. Where are we now? It's true the situation is, is complicated uh, if we look back from, from Paris. It's clear also that Russia is trying to, to disengage itself, to appear, and uh, Minister Reznikov know, knows that uh, better than me, uh, Russia tries to appear as a mediator and not as a part of the, uh, of, of the negotiation, and try to force Ukrainians to speak directly with, uh, with the separatists which is a red line for Ukraine, and we understand that, and we support Ukraine in that, uh, in that stance. And uh, we fight against this dynamic and remind at every time, uh, including at the highest level, Russia of this uh, commitment. So, and um, in addition to that, the situation is also complicated following the pandemic, uh, from, and it has played against us uh, with um, the almost full closing of the, of the checkpoints. This is very concerning, and we would like to bring a, a new, um, new um, element for the population, and this goes through the opening of, of the checkpoints, which is, which is very important. I know that there is a debate in Ukraine about uh, Minsk Accord, the Minsk Agreements. I know that there is a debate, some things, some sorts, things that it's too... It is not no longer valid. Uh, I have heard this debate many times, and uh, my predecessor Isabel also has heard this debate many times. But at the moment, we are we are pra pragmatic, and um, we do think we do believe that it's not by changing the format of the negotiation that you will solve the situation in Eastern Ukraine. Uh, it is the political will uh, that is lacking, uh, uh, and on this point, Russia bears a large part of responsibility. But we think also at this stage, because since I've arrived, I've heard many times about plan B. Plan B, and I've asked my interlocutor, including at the highest level, what is plan B for Ukraine? And at this moment, I don't know, maybe you have the answer, but I do not know what is the answer of plan B. So when there is no plan B, you continue to follow plan A, which is a Minsk agreement, a Normandy format, and uh, we have to, to continue into that direction. Um, so we, we do not think that changing or discussing the format is, I would not say it's pointless, but it, it, it does not bring any um, 
elements for 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 um, progressing to towards peace. And you, you have also we have to remember that if we change the format, we need the agreement of all the parties, including Russia. So the question is, does Russia will accept? Uh, uh, <clears throat> will Russia accept to change the format and to extend it or to, I don't know, to, to modify how it, it's working? I, I do not know that. And last, um, maybe last point, uh, we should also keep in mind that the Minsk agreements are linked to the prolongation of sanctions against Russia. There is a direct link. So if you change Minsk or if you change the format, so Russia could um, say, well, so it's no longer means, so why do we keep sanction against us? So it, it, it's, um, it, it's a fragile territory. It's, uh, it, it could be something uh, we, we should think twice before going into that, uh, that road. And maybe we will discuss it um, afterwards. Um, uh, the United States uh, would like to be more involved. Maybe it's 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 remained to be con confirmed. But this is something that uh, we would be happy to to, to consider if we could improve um, exchanges. We we had good exchanges in the past between I mean the Normandy format and the Special Envoy uh, Kurt Volker. There, there was constant discussion. Maybe we could reinstall or reinforce this kind of channel once uh, there's a, he is a, a new special envoy, uh, uh, U.S. special envoy, which is not the case at the moment. But once there is one, maybe we, we could. And we would be very happy and uh, um, ready in Paris and in Berlin, of course, to, to examine any uh, additional way of involving more our uh, Russians, uh, our um, American friends and, uh, and allies, uh, and also um, a British one. It's, it's not a problem for us, but um, um, this would not, I would say, get um, a solution to the, to the situation, which is once again, and I will conclude with that, which is a political. What is lacking at the moment, it's a political will from all parts and uh, uh, mostly from, from Russia, from Moscow, uh, to solve the, the matter. Once there is this political will, we will get it. Uh, we will solve the, the situation and we, we will bring peace back to, to Ukraine and to Donbass, which is the main goal that we are pursuing together, uh, France and Germany at, at, at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pansan, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for that you are participating in this event. I know as a diplomat it's not easy, just many things very sensitive, but uh, you are very straight and your message is uh, Americans could be part of this process. It's a good message because it's not France or Ukraine who was against participating of the United States, so it was Russia who do not want to help our a strategic partner in this process. But another important, so I understand that France and Germany will not be against that, and it's a good message. Uh, the second thing that you mentioned about ceasefire, uh, you're right, this casualties is less, that's true. Because before Minsk uh, two, I mean, this means this is now seven years, uh, Six, six years, and uh, in that means it was February and January, it was more than 500 killed. So it's absolutely another situation. But for Ukrainians, you understand, for us, every our soldier or officer who have been killed last week or two weeks ago, it's also not ceasefire, so it's our perception. And uh, that's also reality with this reality we live. So we, we, we need this peace. And uh, we also agree, all Ukrainians agree, without our partners, it could be absolutely impossible to achieve this peace with such a uh, uh, pain price, because in another case, it could be a full-scale war between two countries. It's absolutely a catastrophic situation. And uh, another thing that we are not discussed, but I know that France deep and deep in that. Thank you for that. It's Crimea. And we will not discuss in this roundtable our Crimea platform, but it is another important things to do together. But uh, in this uh, roundtable, we discuss me. Thank you so much that you are presenting position of your country. And we believe this France will play more and more active and uh, role and be deeper, deeper in details as you are in the line of touch line. Uh, personally, thank you for that, that you are, uh, as a diplomat, want to see this in person. It's very important for understanding what's happened there. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Я хотів би сказати, що I would like to say that German side also they plan to participate. German side is also actively supporting this position. And uh, uh, after the speech from our partners, I would like to give the floor to a person who not only know uh, this is former Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Marchuk, he knows what happened then when he was the representative of Ukraine in a trilateral contact group. And uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to thank you for being with us. Please tell us about the next steps. Speaking from your experience of work of trilateral contact group in Ukraine, what can be done now? in order to follow the track of diplomacy, not the track of war. And it seems that uh, recently we have some escalation from the side of the aggressor. Please are given the floor. Good afternoon, dear friends. Do you hear me? Yes, we see you and hear you. First of all, I would like to share my views in two parts. These are tactical and strategic ones about tactics. I believe that we should be more active concerning Russia, especially concerning non-implementation. This position of Ukraine decreased recently. So what I mean by this, those who participated and those who participate now, they know what I'm speaking about, but for the public. And I got convinced that even for my friends from Europe, it happened so that they do not know about this, or this, or they forgot about this. Russia signs the first document, the protocol, the Minsk Protocol on the 1st of September uh, 2014. Till now, I may even read this. And Irina Volodymyrovna may confirm this. At each meeting, when uh, I became the head of the group, the there was a question raised not only before the Russian side, but also before OECE. Look, in the protocol it is said that by point four, that OECE, I will read it, point four, to provide constant monitoring at the Ukrainian and Russian border and verification by OECE and to create a security zone in the uh, frontline area of um, uh, 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 the Russian Federation. So this issue was raised at the meeting of the contact group. and. Uh, this is the question to Mr. Saidik, when for the last time there was an attempt uh, by the patrols of OEC to try to implement point four in 2014. I asked this question, but I do not want to say what the answer was. But um, um, I would like to say about Russia and uh, that they say uh, first uh, um, there should be um, the territory should be controlled, but how we can reach this uh, during this transitional period? So um, there is point four of the protocol, and in 2014, let's allow OECE, because until now, and when it was voiced during the meeting, there was no permit to reach this area by OEC patrol. 
And I said to OEC that they got accustomed to this. And you know that uh, the OEC carry out daily and weekly monitorings. And what was the work of these uh, uh, patrols of uh, 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 SMM OECE? And uh, uh, even in reports, they do not mention this topic. This is fair and actual claim of Ukraine to the Russian side, especially when we start this heavy discussion concerning that the first there should be border or the elections. And uh, uh, this point should have been implemented, and OEC should have created a security zone. Uh, they should not replace uh, border guards. This is about the function of monitoring and verification. They should not replace uh, uh, border guards by this mission. Uh, point five of the memorandum that was adopted in two weeks after the protocol. Maybe you remember what is it envisages. This is about a big zone. Uh, from Mariupol up, with indication of settlements, prohibition to place heavy weapons and military equipment in, in settlements, Komsomolska, Komachova, um, I mentioned, and Russia agreed and signed this. Why they did it? This was the initiative of Ukraine in order to somehow provide security for Mariupol, because this zone envisages that uh, no heavy weapons be placed there until now. Uh, the patrols of SMMOECE, uh, there is no permit for them to be there. Uh, they were allowed once to Novozovsk, and that was it. Uh, second, uh, this is prohibition uh, to carry out SMM missions in points, and the Russia, Russian Federation, uh, they should have provided this um, uh, for this. Uh, I asked whether they denounced this point, and Mr. Grislov said, uh, you should understand this, that this is the reality of the situation. So this was one of the arguments of the Russian side. They just said this is the situation, this is the reality. I won't mention other parameters, such as such fundamental parameters. This is, the, this is also from memorandum point two. Um, to stop the military formations at the, la, uh, at the point of the placement, um, as of 2014, and it was signed, and then there was attack on the Balceva. And uh, I stressed this uh, when I was speaking to my friend from Germany, and uh, they confirmed that this is the case. This was signed by Russia, and all the participants, uh, the representatives, uh, signed this. And uh, in three weeks, there was a massive attack on the Balceva. And uh, Ukraine was forced to sign unpleasant addition of the complex of measures. I may bring other examples. I would like to stress this. Uh, I, at that time, explained a lot concerning these things. And I was uh, speaking on TV channels concerning uh, these grave violations by Russia. Uh, these are not all of them. And there is an impression that uh, Russia massively accuses Ukraine that Ukraine does not implement the Minsk agreements. At the tactical level, I would recommend to be more active in uh, Maybe not all the participants of the negotiation process uh, should be involved. We understand this. Many people deal with it. Uh, we should uh, provide information to the public uh, about 
Ukraine, and we should provide proper arguments to support its position. And uh, we introduced proposals to hold one more meeting of the trilateral contact group concerning uh, making conclusions or to revise the implementation of the Minsk agreements. And there was hysterics from the Russian side. And you say, uh, we said, uh, we do not invent uh, anything. Let's uh, uh, not have interviews after this. Let's just look through all the documents, memorandum, uh, protocol, and uh, also uh, communique, and uh, other documents. Let's work on them. Let's revise them. So we may make this proposal uh, public. We may have we may revise this and we may establish who implemented what and who uh, failed to implement some points. Maybe there will be some unpleasant things revealed. I understand this also concerning Ukraine, but I would like to remind in connection with this that Ukraine and me personally, I twice proposed to start preparation for withdrawal of sniper groups from the contact line. Because until 2019, about half or more people who died, they were shot by snipers. There were some explosions and other reasons, but uh, even if we mention the situation that happened three days ago, when our military man died, he died from sniper fire. I understand that this is not a simple task for implementation, but if the sides will prepare well, and if the Russian side agrees, this will be great. And if Russia rejects uh, withdrawal of sniper groups, they say that uh, these are not their groups, we know their arguments. Then everyone will see that Ukraine wants to... When the number of those who died um, decreased, but for the mother, for a daughter of uh, uh, those military men, they do not care about the reasons and about um, they do not care about signature of documents. For them, the loss of life of their loved ones, uh, this is a personal tragedy. And uh, the colleagues also recorded the declaration of Putin that uh, uh, he said that uh, we won't leave Donbass. We will never do this. So this declaration is such a context and uh, uh, in such circumstances at the front line. And uh, in everything that is connected to the front line, uh, we should came up to a very important conclusion. First of all, I would like to focus on the fact that our colleagues, and we thank them really for their help. This may happen as it was in 2014. We saw that Russia built up military capabilities. And we remember what happened in Georgia. And there were a lot of arguments to create special operation forces and uh, uh, they, uh, with, withdrew from, uh, the, uh, some, uh, from the military agreements and other things were done. And it happened so, and I won't even mention our colleagues from NATO because they, uh, they lost a big part of uh, uh, south and uh, south eastern region and Ukraine um, uh, lost uh, Donbas and uh, so um, I compared declaration of Putin and what happened uh, 
concerning Navalny, um, sentencing today's Russia, they uh, they treated the protesters inhumanely and uh, we see that Russian power is not like it was before. The personas are the same, but if we are speaking about their behavior, uh, they changed their behavior. The behavior of Putin changed, and we see it in his declaration uh, when he said that we won't leave Donbas. How can we interpret Minsk agreements in this situation? Uh, I would like to stress one detail. I would recommend to everyone to get rid of the world ceasefire. There is no ceasefire. Uh, uh, and uh, this is really, oh, this is not a truth. This is a ceasefire. And uh, uh, the truth, uh, um, truth, it may involve some humanitarian actions. And uh, ceasefire is what is happening. So, um, I meet different people and uh, they speak about the truth, but this is not the truth because there are snipers and some people, uh, they die because of explosions. Uh, so this, uh, the, um, this is about the terms, the truth and uh, the ceasefire and how they are used. Uh, so what may be done? Uh, we should not change the format of the Budapest Memorandum. Uh, the format that we have now to the format of the those who signed the Budapest Memorandum, because Russia may use the situation, and there are many negative consequences uh, to this. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Budapest Memorandum is a known thing, and uh, I believe we should prepare. We should not uh, replace the format. We should provide a new idea of Ukraine concerning involvement of the formulas that are envisaged in the Budapest Memorandum of basic character. So linguists will prove that Budapest Memorandum, uh, the, these words are assurance and obligations and commitment, such words are used. Uh, the meaning uh, is nearly the same, but uh, what I would like to say is that the Budapest Memorandum the leaders of nuclear states, permanent members of the Security Council of UNO, they signed and the assurances um, in writing by the leaders of the nuclear countries, uh, permanent members of Security Council of UNO about uh, pre preservation of territorial uh, sovereignty, political independence, and point two. I would like to remind to you that no weapons will ever be used against Ukraine. So no, their weapons will be used against Ukraine and uh, that they will protect uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity and uh, the word obligation is used so they are obliged to do so. So Russia occupied Crimea and it violated the Budapest Memorandum in full because it violated point two and they, they did it demonstratively um, before the whole world. And uh, by introducing such a uh, an idea, 
I understand that in order to have this Budapest uh, memorandum included to the process, uh, I understand that uh, Russia will have hysterics concerning this. But I believe that the main signatory parties, United States and Great Britain, France, I believe that despite all the problems, for them it will be difficult because openly speaking by signing the Budapest Memorandum and what I have mentioned and the price um, of this is liquid uh, liquidation uh, um, of uh, military unit uh, 43 at uh, uh, nuclear po uh, and point uh, 6 uh, this is about holding consultations uh, about uh, what it's all about, about uh, global warming or about the document they signed. I won't go into details, but I am convinced that now, even if Russia will oppose, will be, uh, the United States, Great Britain, Maybe we should not speak now, but Donbass, but uh, Crimea is the full act of aggression. They took it by force. The territory of Ukraine was taken by force, and uh, the, uh, there was violation of uh, law. I understand that these matters are difficult, but I am convinced that it's worth to prepare and it's worth to bring to the agenda. There are a lot of difficulties, but we have full right for this. Thank you for your attention and patience. Thank you. You raised the question really broadly, and uh, I gave the floor to you now in order that we would be able to hear important things in a broader context. I would uh, call on you to focus on the Minsk, because if we discuss Budapest Memorandum and other things, that would take long. And uh, about the main message you've raised, the two messages uh, I heard, the first one is uh, about revision and thorough analysis who did what and what was violated, and uh, this should become a research, not uh, uh, behind closed doors, but it should be made public. Maybe, like Irina said, uh, there should be a meeting of the Commission in order to launch this mechanism, in order that people saw this broader picture, because only those who carry out negotiations see this broader picture, and it should be made to public. Uh, thank you for your speech. Before giving the floor to Mr. Oleksandr Mareshko, head of the Parliamentary Committee, before giving the floor to Mr. Mareshka, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Besmertne. Mm, uh, Mr. Besmertne was very closely involved into the trilateral um, uh, working group. And besides that, Mr. Besmertne is a colleague to our French uh, uh, guest. Uh, he is also a diploma, diplomat. And uh, um, Mr. Besmertne, my request to you, please analyze the situation, not from the, uh, the past uh, uh, events point of view, but how can we move forward from this point of view? Thank you for this opportunity uh, preparing my intervention. I was uh, thinking about uh, possible recommendations to Mr. Reznikov as to the 
tactics what can be done but unfortunately he left but he will see this in our um, online uh, streaming uh, uh, currently we can hear from Crimea that uh, um, they are uh, thinking about such things as uh, the Russian Donbass or the uh, harsh mm, uh, type of behavior during the visit of uh, Mr. Burrell and uh, um, this should be taken seriously. What Mr. Marchuk said, it is quite serious. We have to uh, think carefully to structureize these things. Uh, um, we have to be prepared to a uh, possible war with Russia and uh, uh, during the past seven years, thinking about military tactics, about uh, international diplomacy, our internal um, affairs, uh, we understood many things. For example, we understood what, what does the combat field means. Uh, we had to overcome our internal emotional strains. Uh, so what we have understood uh, as of today that uh, the uh, uh, power that the uh, of uh, the Minsk agreements, uh, that the um, legality uh, of the of uh, Minsk is uh, very very small, almost negligible. We had to waste a lot of time trying to demonstrate this. Um, I would refer here to Ukrainian constitution uh, that the treaties which are not uh, signed uh, properly, that is ratified according to the to proper procedure, they are considered void. Mm. Um, uh, when we think about Minsk agreements, my advice for today's politicians is as follows. Please separate the Minsk process uh, uh, as a process from the agreements themselves. When you focus on the process, you may uh, reach something and to connect sanctions with small steps aimed at improving the situation. Uh, the September documents and uh, the protocols which were signed about withdrawal of equipment and about uh, demining um, uh, those documents are uh, in force, but they are not implemented. As to those uh, three protocols, uh, you can uh, pass sanctions, you can make sanctions for the non-compliance. For example, today's night, heavy equipment was brought closer to the contact line, and there are now several um, uh, points along the contact line uh, where the have equipment is concentrated, ready to start offensive. Uh, the preparation of that uh, for that deployment started back in summer when um, the the, uh, the fields were burned. Um, 
then the uh, uh, online regime of continuous uh, uh, communication and with Berlin and Paris uh, between uh, 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 between all the three in, uh, with the three interlocutors is a bad approach when you communicate uh, something to Berlin and uh, uh, Paris uh, um, you cannot at the same moment uh, communicate the same to Moscow the same is true about uh, um, any moves as and statements as to the United States just after the uh, inauguration of the president, uh, uh, Mr. Kunzberg and uh, other particular participants uh, on behalf of Germany they from the very beginning they um, they are involved into the process and uh, when the time goes on uh, some focus points might uh, uh, drop out from uh, their um, attention. So we have to structure our communication and discussions with all the parties involved, with all the interlocutors. Another important aspect is to uh, uh, create the frames. In 2014, we had such fr frames, uh, the Balceva operation, then uh, uh, February, and then August bombs near the Verhovna Rada. Uh, it, quite, it was uh, uh, quite clear that the negotiating parties were unable to go beyond the frames of the bombs in September. And uh, while now we have crossed that frames, that boundaries, uh, mm, uh, uh, and uh, now we are much uh, more further than that frames. Uh, I have to warn all the participants, please do not cross the red lines, because otherwise you will raise tensions inside Ukraine. Uh, then, uh, one more thing, emotional, counterproductive uh, discussion which is going inside Ukraine uh, and uh, uh, exchange of information, uh, emotional exchange in the parliament, etc., um, is counterproductive. It should be turned into productive area uh, uh, we Russia tries to stop the criminal proceedings while Ukraine has to think about implementation of the Roman statute as to the uh, hostages and uh, um, when we recollect uh, August uh, uh, 2015, that bombs near the parliament, uh, we understand that we have to think in terms of the constructive way. Uh, so the transitional justice uh, 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 etc. Uh, we forgot about that aspect while well, that is the aspect which is important for Paris and for Berlin uh, oh, because these are components of the negotiations we have to ensure internal constructive work and uh, uh, take proactive role in negotiations uh, um, 
otherwise that uh, um, uh, brutal attacks on behalf of Kremlin uh, may result uh, in the situation that uh, you will find uh, yourself face to face even to bigger number of enemies. Uh, 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 now negotiations happen in a form of silence. This is due to the lack of initiatives, especially initiatives of regaining control and uh, should be result of constructive discussions inside the country as a result of uh, constructive political dialogue. This should not produce even more conflicts and uh, vice versa, allowed to develop some uh, potentially uh, creative position and uh, allow us to move forward. My analysis suggests that those who assisted in the process uh, between 2014-2018, they stepped back and there is no institutional memory left. And due to that, even those decisions, uh, more or less positive decisions that were taken by 2019, they without institutional memory, they are not being implemented. And Russia manages to uh, offer uh, even worse decisions. And Ukrainian party who do not remember what uh, was uh, done in the past uh, agrees with them. That is professional level should be raised uh, and the uh, whole uh, big areas uh, are omitted in the negotiations. So we have to raise the efficiency and the potential of negotiations by ourselves. Um, and the next, separation of the agreements from the process would allow us to uh, 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 keep in mind uh, new platforms, uh, Crimean platform, Budapest uh, platform. Uh, 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 on January 1st, 2016, the uh, agreements expired. And we have to preserve the uh, the spirit of the of the Minsk agreements, but to reshape the formulation of the uh, content of the agreements. Let us add some aspects of Crimean platform, Budapest platform. Let us uh, rethink this in normal deformant and uh, um, suggest it for further negotiations. Uh, thank you, Roman. Um, I believe that we would need another round table to discuss the details. I believe that uh, uh, in such things as uh, uh, long-term negotiations, as uh, military conflict, we need very strong institutional memory. Uh, the French party. And I spoke with Mr. Kurskin a lot, and uh, I know the German and the French team, they got detailed uh, information about the process, not about documents only, but about the process, what happened in Minsk. And, uh, uh, we know about memoirs of the President of France, Mr. Hollande, and uh, 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 other people don't speak about it, but uh, I know that no one asked me about the Minsk process. and. Uh, what were the details concerning negotiations with Russians? I would like to say one thing. Due to German, France, and Ukraine team, we got 
these agreements, not those that Russians want to uh, force us to accept due to their brutal military attack. And uh, once again, we should remind to ourselves that what is going on in this approach from the side of the Russian Federation, it uh, haven't appeared recently. It was uh, uh, happening for, the, for a long time, and Mr. Alan mentioned that, that uh, uh, this operation near the Valseva, it uh, was first delayed, but uh, then they wanted to get benefits, uh, um, uh, diplomatic and uh, military benefits. So we should uh, have more initiative. You should be able to play at a higher level. What we may do at the legislative level, we should improve our activity um, at the f uh, foreign relations uh, arena. And uh, um, now I would like to give the floor to Alexander Miryashka um, and uh, about uh, aggression from the Russian Federation, whether Russia wants to delay our um, accession to NATO. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for me. This is a blue zone. We should be ready for this, and NATO should be ready to accept us. I'm a proponent of this. I believe that this is a big mistake that we didn't join NATO a long time ago. We had a big chance before the start of uh, military aggression by Russia. I read a small article on the internet, and I was impressed. This is an article from 2017, and uh, foreign experts, experts were asked about implementation of uh, the Minsk agreement and the prospects of this. Uh, the majority of those experts referred to the impossibility of the Minsk agreements, and they had uh, said that Ukraine cannot repeat Peel them or cancel them because uh, this would result in the um, raising of sanctions. Uh, uh, so, what is the difficulty with Minsk forward? I think these are unique negotiations because we're trying to negotiate with a party which. Uh, does uh, not uh, uh, which pretends that uh, they are not the party uh, neither of negotiations nor of any agreements uh, russia uh, in continuously say that they should not uh, implement uh, Minsk agreements uh, and that they are not uh, um, the story about them. In this situation, it is uh, uh, considerably um, difficult to reach any result. What uh, uh, in my opinion, it's my personal opinion, what is the position of Western countries? Uh, I think that uh, uh, Germany and France uh, keep saying that you have signed these agreements, you have to implement that. Although it seems to me that the position of Germany is a bit more flexible. Although uh, uh, Ms. Merkel mentioned that uh, it is not uh, carved in stone, the position of Russia is as follows. That that um, Moscow believes that the Minsk agreements is a part of international law. That's not true because uh, um, it's about a set of measures, not about protocols, not about memorandum, and uh, uh, and it uses the verb indoors. Uh, this is about UN uh, resolution. 
which means that uh, it is uh, neither an international treaty or international law. Uh, if you carefully read uh, the UN resolution, uh, UN Security Council resolution, We clearly see, for example, in the preamble um, that it, this is about respect of the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Then uh, provision nine, uh, uh, the um, promise to withdraw uh, all the have equip all the equipment from the territory of Ukraine. I believe that th sh this should be done by Russia. And uh, when we mentioned the territory of Ukraine, this also includes uh, Crimea. When we look at the nature of the agreements, it is not an international treaty, but nevertheless, this is the this is agreement which has the international nature. And this brings us to the political aspects of the problem. The problem is not in the text. Uh, I believe that His Excellency Ambassador of France uh, truly said that this is the, the issue of the will, the problem of the political will. We want to rev revive or restore our territorial integrity. Ukrainian delegation made everything possible and even impossible in Minsk, despite the uh, skeptical position of the Russian um, delegation. But the president of Russia, who is final decision maker, uh, this uh, uh, could not be done. and. Uh, um, for Russia, Ukraine has a significant uh, uh, geopolitical meaning, and uh, that is why Russia is uh, not interested in implementation of Minsk agreements. Uh, and uh, due to this uh, Donbass conflict, they can keep Ukraine uh, hooked uh, in uh, this geopolitical trap. And they clearly understand that um, when we remove the issue of Donbass, the issue of Crimea would be the next. And uh, also, um, this brings us to the truth that this is uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, political will and the issue of political interests. Uh, I do not expect, but nevertheless, I have a small hope that uh, position of uh, uh, France and uh, Germany uh, expressed uh, resolutely would force Russia to change its position. And then I also have a hope that the uh, new U.S. administration can make uh, a more intensive pressure, which would force Russia to change its position. Thank you very much. I would like to comment. That. Uh, Uh, it is uh, better to negotiate uh, as long as possible instead of starting act actions without proper preparation. Uh, 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 
uh, and I fully agree with your characteristic of the Minsk agreements as a, a unique process. Uh, I was the witness how those documents were uh, compiled and uh, why this re resulted in controversial perception of them, because uh, Russia uh, um, uh, uh, first tried to uh, uh, offer a text uh, based on the UN uh, resolution and uh, uh, this resulted in the uh, document which we have that uh, territorial integrity of Ukraine is uh, the uh, is of primary importance. On the other hand, Ukraine has to implement Minsk agreements in its form. Uh, that is, this was the result of a, a compromise and thanks to. Uh, France and Germany and uh, uh, these are two countries who were very closely involved uh, due to the direct involvement of the leaders of both countries uh, thanks to the fact that they um, chilled up Mr. Putin when he wanted to escalate the conflict. Uh, mm. We now have even this document. We were very much surprised when Russia occupied Crimea, but since that moment we know what to expect from this country. We have 20 minutes before the end of our event, and uh, we have to... Uh, experts here... Um, uh, whom I would like to ask a very important question. What we can do in the humanitarian area? That is to uh, uh, assist our citizens in Donbass to uh, demonstrate that we believe uh, uh, Ukrainians in the occupied territory are Ukrainian citizens. Um, uh, Ms. Evazovska, thank you for this opportunity. I understand that it's luxury to uh, to speak here after such uh, um, representative uh, um, participants. Uh, um, all the participants of uh, the process which had been working uh, in the process in the past, they were on the same page. I believe that all people who uh, at least once participated in the negotiations, they had become big patriots of Ukraine because uh, they um, they uh, s had to su survive through that uh, suffering and humiliation. Uh, His Excellency mentioned uh, possible Plan B. Uh, I would refer to this uh, Plan B. Before pandemic, I had a chance to visit Switzerland, and I saw that marvelous mountains, but without snow due to the climate change. Uh, and eco-activists uh, 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 road uh, with a ski on the mountains. Uh, we do not have a plan B. The same could be stated about Russian Federation today. Um, we do not have a, a plan B as to Russia. We, we do not have Russia B. 
be Russia in a uh, B version. Uh, we have to understand that in a short term perspective, Russia is not going to change its position as to Ukraine. In this uh, situation, Ukraine and Ukrainian society has to change its attitude to its own rules, to some practices, to some processes, which are part of our civilizational dimension. We have such thing as the Constitution of Ukraine with its Article 37. Mr. Besmertny mentioned political uh, aspects. I would refer to Article 37. Seven, um, which prohibits creation any political groups whose actions are aimed at the destroyal of state sovereignty, uh, territorial integrity, and uh, threat and national interests, etc., which use violation against uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Um, uh, 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 the Minsk agreement does not provide for the change of the constitution of Ukraine. Moreover, we have many uh, international uh, documents. Uh, uh, the, uh, these are the Copenhagen document. The OCE member countries have to uh distinguish between groups which use violence against democratic institutions aiming to uh, make harm to the territorial integrity and independence of the countries and in the interests of the third countries. That is, OEC as an organization has no potential to change these international standards. That international standards were passed after the Second World War and are based on the emotions uh, uh, in result of the Second World War. And they were passed with a big international consensus. Uh, this could not be repealed. And uh, uh, what do I mean? Uh, the OSC cannot change the humanitarian standards which are based on the declarations and documents uh, passed after the Second World War, including the right of victims uh, of uh, persecution, uh, the victims of the inhuman uh, treatment, um, uh, 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 so if we bring together the Russian Federation Minsk agreements and all these humanitarian standards, this looks like a deadlock. Uh, I have heard what Mr. Reznikov mentioned and uh, Mr. Mirishka. I recollect my two years in the Minsk process between 2016 and 2018. Uh, um, the Russia Federation uh, uh, will not, uh, is not to change now. We do not have Russia B, so to say, Russian inversion B. And uh, uh, also, uh, they uh, are now uh, surviving the transformation of power. And uh, uh, we, uh, in this transformation of power in Russia, we should be fully prepared to use any smallest opportunity to raise the issue about regaining our territories, our sovereignty, not because we are the victim, but because we have the right 
uh, as other countries of uh, Europe, of Western world, and all the countries that have the right in humanitarian dimension after the Second World War and according to that standards. So the first uh, thing is a, a legal um, uh, uh, legal clarity, so to say. Uh, we have clearly understand what we can do at the moment when Russia eventually will lose control over the occupied territories. Now, people living in that occupied territories are uh, they should be presented the options which will be available for them. We have a document which is now published on the Ministry of Occupied Territories. is about uh, social rights. Uh, uh, this document has to be discussed and improved and passed by Ukrainian parliament. This will create the situation of legal certainty for the future. The next is about institutions. Uh, we should have a plan, we should have proper legislation and proper institutions in place by the moment when we will get an opportunity to uh, uh, bring back our territories. Our uh, neighbors, like Croatia, for example, showed good practice, good experience, how it is important to be ready. As of now, we do not have uh, specialists. We do not have uh, good plan. We do not have media. Media as a channels for communication of uh, our position in society. We cannot reach our uh, Ukrainian people in the occupied territory. And unfortunately, this creates very bad situation in terms of information. Also, uh, people in occupied territories, they're deprived from political rights. Uh, the uh, elections were prevented in the uh, uh, pre-contact line territories, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, this uh, um, was rather harmful for uh, Ukrainians in occupied territories. I'm very grateful to the EU uh, partners who mentioned 18 communities who were prohibited to elect their representatives uh, to the parliament. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, to the local administrations in 18 communities. The civil and military administrations has total control there without local self-governance. In a short-term perspective, this might be um, uh, important to for the current parties uh, who are thinking uh, that they would not get that power, and that's why imp who implemented that decision. But in a long-term perspective, we need to raise trust to the national authorities, and uh, we have to gain trust from local population. Uh, uh, 
that is people are asked do you trust to ukrainian authorities and people definitely will say no because in the past they were deprived from elections i mentioned about strong governmental institutions and uh, now I think we should demonstrate that we do not ignore Ukrainians who are living there. And the third is the economic uh, situation. Economic situation, it's not about our personal pockets, it's about the glass ceiling. If the state is poor, then the correlation between democracy and uh, uh, poverty is correlated. Uh, when the, uh, the country is poor, there is uh, a huge corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is direct correlation between birth rate in the country and level of corruption. Uh, of course, I am not an expert as Mr. Barchuk in uh, uh, political issues, but I, I uh, observed how so-called uh, foreign observers arrived to the false uh, Russian reverenda. They, um, we had all e e s packages of information about them. Those were people from the UK, from Czech Republic. I provided Irina with a full list of uh, those people with uh, full documentation about uh, their And I was asked the question, how their names are written in the passports? Uh, this was the, the question from Ukrainian authorities. Uh, I do not know how they are spelled in their pass, how their names are spelled in their passports. Uh, it's the function of the security service to find that. We cannot change. We cannot change the Russian Federation, but we should be prepared to the moment when they would become weak and the favorable conditions for Ukraine bringing back its territories will be created. Thank you very much, Olga. So we calculated our time frame properly. So. We started uh, with the speech from the person who dealt with the temporarily occupied territory and will end our discussion on this also. Uh, so this is not the first event at UCMC concerning these issues. And uh, I will tell you more based on our discussions. We will continue our marathon. This will be for many years, I believe. So the floor is given to the Minister of Temporarily Occupied Territories and the Head of Security Center. So uh, given the floor, Radim uh, Chernish, maybe you got tired from the marathon, but I would like to focus on several important issues, and I will express my opinion on important topics. If you are speaking about the Minsk agreements, um, they have four components, three of them directly related to improvement of lives of people in the course of um, uh, so these are social and humanitarian issues we speak a lot about and the issues of security because security is the basic component we should focus on. And uh, Ukraine demonstrates respect to the rights of the people. It happens so that due to the actions of Russian Federation, they are in the conflict zone or suffered from the conflict. 
Uh, so uh, this is introduction of uh, humanitarian, uh, international humanitarian help uh, for millions of dollars and fair mechanisms uh, included in the agreements. So this is fair for, on behalf of Ukraine. No one interferes. Uh, there is proper assessment of the needs of people and there is proper governmental support. We speak about checkpoints a lot. Uh, about social services and repair of bridges. By this, Ukraine demonstrates its respect to values, universal values, and the wish to help to people, and we provide our domestic and international assistance. And uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, in the occupied territories, they do not have proper help. Occupation administrations influence international humanitarian help, and this is direct violation of international humanitarian uh, law and the Minsk agreements. No access, uh, no full access to humanitarian uh, organizations, and there are limitations imposed. Uh, um, and uh, Ukraine accepted the International uh, Red Cross uh, organization to the places of imprisonment or pretrial detention. And uh, there is no political decision by the Russian Federation to provide such access to international organizations, including uh, International Red Cross, uh, in non-controlled territories. Also, the issues of exchange of uh, uh, prisoner swap. There are civilians also who are held there. This issue is politicized. We are trying to speak about humanitarian character, and the group in which Irina participated is humanitarian group, but in fact it is a political group because swap of prisoners is based on political reasons, and this is not the fault of Ukraine. And uh, the ministry has its responsibility, Mr. Resnik has included in this process, is they improve the situation for local population, for those people who suffered. But uh, this is not proper resolution. This is not a step of political resolution, because it depends on uh, politicians where there is a deadlock, political deadlock created by the Russian Federation. The logic, I believe, uh, of the international community is that uh, this collective security system provided by UNO uh, uh, if there is a threat to peace, the threat to the collective security, then the Security Council, um, they provide a temporary decision to provide temporary measures. This is a temporary decision. By this, they tried to prevent further escalation of the conflict in order to provide recommendations to everyone who is involved in order to regulate the situation. And then in accordance with the UNO Charter, there should be another decision concerning measures against the violator or other measures. For example, sanctions are imposed through UNO, and we see that the system is not working. That's why Ukraine focused its efforts and now should focus on them, on the mechanisms that are not only connected with the use of uh, methods and measures of collective security, you know, because of blocking by Russian Federation. That's why bilateral contracts, um, allies should be included, alternative mechanisms should be involved to uh, return to status quo. And uh, what status quo as of uh, 20 uh, or as of 1990, uh, before 1991, when it was fixed that uh, Ukraine 
uh, is uh, um, in its uh, borders, and this was confirmed by the Russian Federation at that time. So maybe we should involve our partners, organizations. For me, this is evident. We should also act alternatively and also use opportunities of, uh, provided by UNO. And some initiatives go from European politicians. For example, resolution of European Parliament uh, concerning peaceful regulation. It envisages, and uh, we as deputies, they say, we, so this is good that you, uh, in the resolution of the parliament, uh, it was improved that the representatives in the uh, trilateral contract group, why do they say that they didn't see Russians there? There are no names, but there are such declarations. What it means politically that we do not have proper coordination of efforts with our European partners. And for them, even uh, concerning this cooperation uh, outside, you know, this uh, prevents us from using uh, some mechanisms uh, of cooperation. So values are important to uh, incentivize this local motivation, but this is not a political mechanism that would allow us to use uh, the influence to return territories and population in the framework of the borders that are recognized by the whole world. So we should uh, decrease the suffering of people and we should reach our aim to return people and territories. We may do it inside the state by distributing uh, responsibilities properly inside the country. We should establish uh, who is responsible for what in this area. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, several minutes, not to sum up, that, but to thank those participants who actively participated in the process of trilateral contact group, and they carried out this work that is not easy. And we thank Mr. Mereshka and Mr. Reznikov for uh, their work that they continue now. And everyone looked uh, in the eyes of Putin, and uh, they all have united position. And uh, we are losing time. We should have uh, proper continuity of actions. There should be sustainability of uh, foreign policy. And not only this, we should analyze the events properly. Today's round table, why it is needed. Not only to express positions, I watched some programs of Ukrainian TV channels. Some channels were closed because of propaganda, but uh, I see that there is Russian narratives on TV, and there should be proper response on this. I won't call on closing someone, but this is a fight at the level of ideology, at the level of perception. People, they are replaced by the institutional memory, it just fades away. You have some knowledge, but uh, then there may be some uh, information narratives that may bring changes. So I thank you for um, providing information to society. You mentioned the parliament and those ideas, and Mr. Reznikov, uh, he will see all this, what we've discussed today, and the initiatives, and Ivan Kirillovich and Ivan Petrovich mentioned them. And I agree with Olga Ivazovska. Evidently, Ukraine, it should be strong and be ready for the new phase. Then it will be able to overcome new challenges. And I'm sure Russia, despite declarations of Putin, will uh, refuse of Donbass. Crimea is the other case. 
but uh, Russia, uh, we won't accept the, uh, what they want, and uh, Ukraine may be strong, with a strong army, with a strong fleet, with strong diplomacy, with consolidated position of the parliament and executive power and the president. This Ukraine will have a chance to win over. This is victory. Uh, we should have proper partners and we will be able to win. This is a historic mission we have. We should stop Imperial Russia at this border, um, the future border of NATO and the European Union. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your attention. And I wish you health and success. Thank you.